Well, guys, looks like 2024 is already off to a messy start. And y'all already know we talking about Mr. Pimpin' Pimpin' himself, Cat Williams. Cue the, the intro. intro. Hey, what's up, you guys? Happy New Year! We are back with our first episode for 2024. <laughs> we left out the confetti poppers, guys. Yes, but, you know, they're popped in the spirit. Right. <laughs> so, welcome back. I am your girl, Danny the Doll. And I am Sophie Jo. And, and you, you are, are watching, watching Sister Sando! That always just makes me think about... Sister. Yeah. Anyways, guys, we are going. We have a juicy episode for y'all because mm-hmm. we are too excited to talk about Cat Williams and all his stuff. So let's get started with Sister, Sister Celebrity, Celebrity Scoop. Scoop. We, we got, got the latest news, news and that gossip for, for you. Ow, ow. Ow. So, sis, who are we sounding off on today's episode for this verse? Y'all, we got to start the tea off with who's been spilling the most tea? Cat Williams, stand up comedian Cat Williams. Yes. Um, As you guys, I'm sure, have heard, it's been everywhere by now. Mr. Cat Williams sat down with Shannon Sharpie. Is it Sharpie or Sharpie? Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay Podcast. It was none of those. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, he sat down with him on his podcast earlier this week. And what should have been a short interview ended up being, they say, like two hours long. Two hours. Me and my mom watched almost all of it yesterday. At, at some point it turned into just background noise but y'all cat williams came to the interview on fire okay he was not letting nobody live or breathe he was on a next now for me personally i didn't understand why he felt the need to do this um i don't see a reason for him to just come out but like, okay so this and this wore this and this is why this happened and i'm like what what exactly is this doing for anything? You know what I mean? It kind of just came out of nowhere. I was like, right. does someone piss him off? Is it just something that he wanted to finally get off his chest after a few years? I don't know. But yeah, to give you guys some context, um, if you haven't seen or heard by now, he went to the interview and he was talking about his fellow comedian colleagues, um, Earthquake, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, um, Ricky Smiley. Ricky, Ricky I mean. Smiley. Tiffany had it just saying like either they sucked or they stole his jokes, they stole his storyline, or they're wearing dresses, uh, how they're country bumpkins. He was just really throwing shade and talking about I them. mean, sold their souls there. So, oh yeah. Sold their souls to the devil for fame and money and talking about Kevin Hart, but being an industry plant. Right. Even Tyler Perry saying Tyler he's Perry. not helping. Why is he anybody famous from his from the work that they've done with Tyler? And it's just like Now, he started off saying he came on there to combat the lies that Cedric the Entertainer, Steve Harvey, and Ricky Smiley had all done in an interview previously with Shannon Sharp, and apparently, Cat Williams thought that they were lying, so he wanted to clear up the lies. Yeah. Now, what are you saying? Some of these stories, we don't know because we weren't there. It could be Cat Williams' truth. The other people could have stole his jokes. Some of the stuff, some of the evidence that has come out has proven that some of his jokes were indeed stolen. Yeah, I mean, Cat, you know, people, of course, a lot of people are saying, you know, one thing Cat's not going to do is lie. He is, he seems like one of those type of comedians that keeps it real. He don't care about this Hollywood shit. Bernie Mac, they said Bernie Mac was the same way. However, I don't think everything is true. I think some of this is because Cat just got a chip on his shoulder from some shit that happened decades ago. And like Kevin Hart said in a tweet and Cedric, <laughs> he said, "Get some of that anger out you, man." Yeah. Because <laughs> it, 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 there wasn't any, any need for all of this. Like, you want to come and clear your name because of what somebody else said on this very same platform? Okay, cool. But why are you going all off in the, you know, you um, question somebody's sexuality? This yeah. person's an energy plant. Oh, well, they this is what happened. Soul. This is what happened in two thousand and five, and then somebody said that he actually mentioned Ricky Smiley's deceased son, which a lot yeah, of people was like, quick. that's... He did. That's when I said, okay, now, that's too far. It's like, come on, dude. His, like, his exact line was, I don't know why someone would lose a child and then come the next week with lies on someone's podcast. You shouldn't have brought that up. Period. period. It's like, you, you think this way about this man, but I see that you saw that his child was deceased. I mean, 
clearly you must be keeping up with something <laughs> that they're it doing. Was, and the interview gave once um, again, whether it was true or not, it gave very much bitter. It he was saying how he was left out. It kind of it sounded like someone who had been left out all their life and like the black sheep. And now, like, okay, I'm finna really tell y'all how I feel and how you actually suck, and I'm funnier than you. Yeah. I've, and he kept, you know, reminding us, oh, I've, I've turned down this much, this much money. I've sold out this show. It's like, ah, this, like he was trying to remind us of who he was. It's like, we know you are one of, and Ken Williams has been hilarious since day one. We know your success. We know this and that. It's like, you don't need to tear all these other folks down because they chose a different route to be successful. I mean, but he definitely got these comedians in and up. And they I mean, up. <laughs> I was going to work, y'all, the other morning, and I just passed by Ricky Smiley Morning Show radio show. Ricky Smiley spent his whole morning. <laughs> it's like, and <laughs> yeah, it's like, and I love out of everybody, Ricky kept his comment. He kept it classy. He was just, and he just like, you know what? I you know I never sold out like arenas and this and that. But every show I've had, I've sold out. My fans have adored me since day one. I put in the work. So I don't know what this dude probably missed, but it's still love this way. And I'm not going to speak next on him because he has kids and families too. Yeah. See, grown, a lot of grown men can't do that. So, and I know one person he didn't touch, and that was D.L. Hughley. He, pro- he bigged up D.L. Hughley. Oh, yes. Honey. But D.L. would have ate him alive and read him for filth. Because D.L. can read can... somebody down. <laughs> he would have <laughs> ate him up on his radio show. So he wasn't playing in the muddy waters. That's fine. But, I mean, hey, shout out. I mean, that interview was already at 10 million views in like three days. Yeah. So I wish we can get those kind of numbers one day. But. Anyways, guys, is there anything else you want to say about Cat Williams? Um, Cat, I think you're hilarious. I've been following you since I was young, but um, bro, like, what's up? <laughs> it's like, what's going on, man? But hey, if something else comes out, you know, to add on, of course, you guys know your girl's gonna keep you updated. And and if you want to stay updated all the time, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Sister Sound Off underscore. underscore. Yes, <laughs> and hit that like and subscribe button. Please do okay. Um, while we're wrapping up, Cat Williams with the chip on his shoulder, y'all. This is getting real. Twenty twenty four is off to, to a just mess. And you know what? Let me pause it and and, and reverse it a little bit. The end of twenty twenty three was already grabbing some people and then 2024 was just like okay boom now we really about to expose more people because remember what happened towards like november december all these allegations everybody from paula abdul to the guy from vin diesel from fast and furious to freaking diddy Diddy, which is not a shot to freaking the jackson jermaine jermaine jackson with this (laughs) Head. Yes, I was like, oh my god, they're getting everybody. So and we already know <laughs> who we. Who, this is a perfect oh, segue yes. for our next guy in Sister Celebrity Scoop. Speaking of who they're grabbing, you guys already know Jeffrey Epstein. Mm-hmm. I mean, guys, I've seen his name so much, I had to, in you know, <laughs> ignore my ignorance. I had to Google who exactly he was. He's an entrepreneur businessman a mogul you know a lot of connections with a lot of powerful people Mm -hmm. he was very successful and what made him relevant a few years back was this documentary that came out that's what started everything it's called filthy money that's exactly what he was and it was it was really big on uh, netflix and basically long story short after he abused all these women he went to prison some kind of way he either killed himself or somebody did it and all of that money that he was supposed to pay back to these victims and their families, this son of a B <laughs> took that money and put it in his brother's account or something. So they, when he dies, they got nothing. Like he was a dick from all the way from the beginning to the end of his death. Like no remorse, no nothing. And so, yeah. So now <clears throat> the royalty has come out. And I remember watching this documentary and at the end, they were not at the end, but somewhere in the middle, they were talking about this list. And one of the names I remember came up was Chris Tucker and Bill Clinton. Those two. I didn't know about these other people. And I was like, you know, yeah, and I was like, that's, that's real interesting. But they, they didn't say anything else. And then behold, here we are to the new year. Somebody put the list out and it's got everybody in them. Let's name a few people <laughs> and then I want to give my opinion of 
um, yeah. What I think. So, my, is this is MJ for Michael Jackson. Yeah, this is MJ, and we ain't talking to basketball stars. We talking about Mister Hee Hee. Yeah. Well, shoot, he did. So Michael Jackson was on the list. Some people it's gonna be a shock. Some people it might not be a shock. Depends on what you believe. In. Yeah. Whoopi Goldberg, child. Whoopi Goldberg had to come out and do real quick. <laughs> she was like, me. "I don't go nowhere." <laughs> I don't go nowhere but to work and in my house, <laughs> right? Maybe a theater or two. But Whoopi Goldberg was on the list. Supermodel Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell. Apparently, she had a party that I st- uh, Jeffrey was at, and I don't know what all happened at the party. Maybe she knew or didn't know. We don't know nothing, but we just saying she was on the list. And then there's, of course, like I said, Mr. Tucker. Chris Tucker. Now, that was a um, shock when I seen that. And you said Bill Clinton. Now, yes, our former president. Here's the thing. Them being on the list, them going to these parties, we don't know if they were involved in that other stuff. Because a lot of these celebrities go to these lavish parties. Yeah. And they're working, they're talking, they're having fun, they're partying. They don't know mean what. They're privy to everything that's going yeah. on behind the, the closet back here. Right. Um, and adding to that, some of the victims actually came out and said, yeah, we met Naomi. We met Jeffrey. Yeah. I seen MJ there. Yeah. We met Chris Tucker, but none of them were, they said we didn't see them doing anything or they weren't, uh, you know, involved in anything. They were just, they were his acquaintance. Uh, some of the victims said they, they don't think that these celebrities were aware of who this guy. First off, nobody knew that Jeffrey was basically like a whole damn scammer. Yeah. His businesses was fraud, fraudulent. Freaking all the stuff he owned, all that land on in Florida and properties, all that shit was just it was all crap. But you know what? Aside from this, a lot of things that are owned in America, mm. the world, is got it has been accomplished with dirty money. Yeah. That's so but the people who are honest, making an honest living, they barely getting by. But the scammers, the schemers, the plotters, the doer wrongers. They live living in a it lot up. Of luxury. <laughs> yeah. But, and, but but I did want to say this about that list. How do we know that this like where did this list come from? The li- he write it? Is it how do we know it's real? Well, it's real because it was actually not just a list, it was a document. Um that, basic yeah, when they did their investigation, they got like surveillance videos and with different witnesses from parties and stuff, and they saw all of his acquaintances and Yes, that's why I say you have to watch the documentary to actually see. It wasn't just like a piece of paper with like some names on it. It was like an actual document that they were using for like, I guess, uh, to investigate him. Yeah. Wow. Well, guys, I'm sure there's many more names on this list. Oh, yeah. So we're going to keep you updated, okay? And in the meantime, in between time, I heard, I encourage you to check out the documentary on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's it called? It's Filthy Money. Filthy Money. Nasty. Mm-hmm. Um, let's move on into our next topic which is bachelorette yes bachelorette former star rachel Lindsay has already gotten a divorce from her husband uh mr brian yeah um i if if, or as you guys know if you watch the show she was the first black bachelorette to be on there very successful woman beautiful and it seems like at the time she had found the love of her life but Clearly, you know, what my girl Jasmine told them to say, forever oh doesn't last too long. And it's it really forever. don't. <laughs> Y'all, Jasmine told them love, yeah, that's my girl. Love her. Yes. Oh. Um, but yeah, after four short years of marriage, Rachel and Brian have divorced. A lot of people are in shock because we think when we go on these dating shows, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's down to a science. They've got the love experts. They picked out people to your t- the exact liking. But one thing you can't scientif- scientify, scientifically yeah. calculate is chemistry between people. So it might be great on paper, but if that connection, that chemistry ain't right, I don't care what show you go on. You know? <laughs> yeah according to mr brian he made a little brief statement i'm not gonna read the whole thing but long story short he's saying after more than four years of marriage him and her together have made the difficult decision to part ways part waves ways and um of course he starts off with you know i people who follow me know i don't like to put my personal affairs on social media I like to keep my uh personal affairs safe 
in a, in a safe space for our family and um you know basically saying he um uh, i wanted you to hear from the source before the blog started making up their own reality mm-hmm. so that that i do understand and said please, please respect our spaces and our families as we figure out the next steps now a little bit of the tea is not only did they he filed for divorce but he's asking for a sp- uh oh, yeah. he's spousal asking support. for a spousal she was asking for spousal it says husband filed for divorce and he is asking for support <laughs> and that's low down and dirty you know why he's doing that because she's the one who went on the show the bachelorette so in his mind oh she's probably gotten a nice deal out of this so she's making more money than him probably so he's like let me get spouse support and you know what since we're on this spouse, and i'm not a married woman i hope one day i will be hi honey um to me whoever made up spousal support really needs to be shot in the ass let me tell you why because if we're done then we need to be done completely why am i still supporting you after we done i got a whole husband and two other kids and i'm still supporting your your life well it, it's not if you get married again i think well well we, i don't know the the single, whole rules the, maintain the lifestyle that you've been accustomed to throughout the marriage exactly stupid like I got to maintain what you're used to because you don't want to get out there and make your own money. Okay. It's crazy. It's it's the yeah. a lot of people uh <laughs> what's it called common law cuz marriage is really a business cuz if you really love each other I might sound weird and one of those weird people but you really don't need the piece of paper. It's really a business when you get married cuz you're one. So let's say you did break up. Now all your stuff is tied up with his or her. It's just a lot versus just breaking up amicably and splitting up but that's my opinion that's just for another show another episode another podcast <laughs> right <laughs> um i'm here for marriage but i do understand what my sister's saying yeah so um yeah i'm not sure why he is asking for that and my sister has had her own opinion i really don't know <laughs> what he got going on but um sir go get a job all right best of luck to y'all both <laughs> now, we have to mention this because Valentine's Day is coming up, and I, while I am single, but Valentine's Day, when it comes down to shopping, they put out all the pink stuff, all the hearts, and I just love pink. I can't get away from it, as you can oh see. Oh my God, yes. If I could be pink, I would be the color pink. Um, like, my, the job I work at right now, we had Valentine's Day stuff out in December. Like, we weren't even done with Christmas yet. They, they scooted all the Christmas shit to the side. All I saw was pink, big old pink fluffy pillows, XOXO candy. I'm like, yep. I'm excited. <laughs> so, with all this stuff coming out, guys, y'all know the hype around the Stanley Cups. Oh my God. First off, the Stanley Cups have gone crazy. The whole, it's a whole community. It's like a cult, a tribe. It's yeah. Like I, I know the company is somewhere popping bottles in another country right now. Uh, just. You heard about that girl whose car got on fire and, and the Stanley Cup survived. Yes. And they bought her a new car. Now, that was That was, that good. was dope. The Stanley Cup for that. Yeah. But, guys, they did release a limited edition um, Valentine's Day edition Stanley Cup. Some pink, some red at Target. People have been losing their marbles. I mean, if America was not already losing it before, I don't know what's going on. People Especially fighting over not, a red cup. All over a cup. It is crazy. I've seen God get knocked up and shoved out of the way. And I'm like, is there money in these cups? Like, what is wrong with y'all? It's about the aesthetic, the vibe. And don't get me wrong. They're great quality cups. Um, they, Yeah. I mean, the lady with her car on fire, that that sold me. Anyways, I'm like, shit, you mean to tell me I could get lost in a volcano and my cup would be fine? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> I mean, it's a great marketing plan, but it's like, come on, y'all. Everybody relax. Right. It's a cup. Don't kill each other. I'm fine with the Yetis. It's yeah. Relax. As long as my drink stay cool, I'm cool. Okay. Right. You're cool, and I'm cool. Shout out to Anthony Hamilton. Love you. You won the versus battle. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let's just speak real quick. This is not in our notes. She said versus battle. Y'all, what is... Oh, my what? God. Now, I'm just knowing, okay, 2024 then came. I know they finna come back versus battle. Swiss beats and... Swiss Tim. and Tim. What are y'all doing well, over there? Last we heard, they said, what, maybe last year? We coming back bigger and better. We ain't heard nothing. Like, Alicia, get off the keyboard and t- 
take your husband down there to the production site and y'all get this crap together. Back. And let's bring it back how we started. Just in the house, you know, with yes. the phone, trying to make it into this giant concert and ordeal and that's when stuff started getting we didn't Thank yeah we didn't need all that we just wanted the music and the vibes like it was yeah, a celebration was so of music now so you gotta have people flying out their team their makeup their hair it's like, yeah what? it's it's become it's like no you we want DJ battle at the beginning, <laughs> a dance off, you got served you've got uh p diddy with his ciroc he got to advertise in every Second. episode <laughs> like, bring versus battles back in the year yes we really miss that show As you guys know, she has been in the headlines speaking about just how difficult she's been having of a time in her acting career. Yeah. Um, being a black woman in Hollywood. Yeah. She recently did, she was sat down with someone to talk about the color purple and, of course, how amazing of an experience that was, which you guys haven't seen yet. You need to go see it. Um, and basically she gave a, a little insight she basically said that they had to her and her uh, i guess co-workers her co-staff how do we call the actors cast members. there we go cast members had to take their own car yeah they wanted to they provided them a car but they wanted them to drive it to set every day now to the average person you know oh what's the big deal when you are a movie star, that's not normal protocol. Yeah. This was a, I hate to say it, a more white-based movie. They wouldn't be asking to drive the set every day. And then even with that, Taraji asked, you know, hey, what about security? Like, can I bring my uh, security or something with me if, if I'm going to drive my own car to the own set? And they told her, uh, what did they tell her? If we do it for you, we'll have to do it for everybody. Right. As if it's not in the budget. Like... Like, we'll do it for everybody. Yeah, do it for everybody then. Why are you? It was crazy. And then she gave us a little insight with her days being on Empire, saying that she had to fight for uh, to not be in movie trailers with bugs and insects and shit in it. A roach infestation. Yeah, just just to film that she had to film in that. And I'm just like, what the. F- and, and, you know, so you're starting to see a little bit more of why she's so frustrated and, and what she's probably been dealing with her and God knows who's so else. Many other black actresses and actors. Yeah, for and, years. And just, shoot, being black in America, period. <laughs> like, that's one aspect that the acting world, the arts world, think about it in corporate America. Oh. One black and it's 50 other yeah. whites. And then we even think about the other minorities, Asians or the Hispanic community, just being a minority. Sometimes we get the short end of the stick. Who are you telling? But when we start complaining, then it's like, oh, you guys are always complaining and you want sympathy. Oh my God. Uh, Once again, another topic, another podcast, another episode. Uh, Just like the damn Ebony alert they got now. The who? Oh, yeah. Another (laughs) time. I thought that was just a joke. Y'all, we are going to go into our. We are done with Sister Celebrity. Yes. If you enjoyed that, if you have any feedback about the topics we discussed, Make sure to comment down below if you're watching on YouTube or hit if us you're, up. Mm-hmm, if you're listening on Spotify, let us know how you feel. Apple Podcast. Yeah, let us know what you want to hear about next week, and uh, we will keep you updated. Yeah. Um, let's get into our next segment, which we like to highlight, shine a little light on someone doing positive things in a major way. Yes. And that is Who's, who's Making, making Moves. moves? That was our best one so far. Okay. <laughs> Guys, uh, our highlight of the week is none other than actress, singer, entrepreneur, beauty brand owner, Selena, Selena Gomez. Gomez. Yes. <laughs> yes, our girl Selena Gomez, the beautiful, talented, just everything. She yeah. really just been out here, you know, she making, a- yeah, making the moves with all types of different mo- of different things, you know, yeah. that she's into and all of them has stuck. And, you know, sometimes when some of these celebrities, they try to try something new, yeah. get into something, start something, sometimes it's a hit or miss. It's just, yeah. but she, she's been doing great. I and mean, her career has been a nice glint. Too. Yeah. Kind of come from Disney. Where's, and what then, is the name of the, uh, I was going to say, Sunny. Where's the Lisa Waverly, Waverly Place. Place. There we go. 
a great role in that. And then she stepped into singing. It's her. She wants me. Good night. That's Vanessa Hudgens. Yeah. Right? My bad. <laughs> I song? love you like a love song, baby. That's when she was with Hubble J B. Oh, her infamous relationship with Justin mm-hmm. Bieber. They're I feel like she the one who got away. But uh, her yeah. other hit song, she's had a lot. Cool for the summer. Don't tell your mother. <laughs> cool the the oh, I like the one she did with ASAP oh, Rocky. Wait, that's Demi Lovato. <laughs> Oh my god, Serena, what clothes do you have out? Oh my, Serena, right that was no shade with a no shade with a girl. <laughs> While she's over there trying to figure it out with Shazam, um, I like the one she did with A$AP Rocky. Rocky. Came out a few years ago. Uh, na 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 oh, na na. When you ready, ready to come, come and get it? it. Na, you know what she was talking about. Um, oh oh, and then you know she was going through a little ordeal with JB. You know after they broke up, then she came out. But the heart was what it was. It was all serious. <laughs> now what's the song right now she has a hit it's like an afrobeat oh with with uh, uh not burner boy but it's the, afrobeat. i know oh calm God. down calm I'm down, down. Baby, you can, i'm down i'm down and, Look up, and then what's the part uh baby show me you can y'all know baby, what we're talking about me, la, uh, 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 oh. and i think it was um in he did get a Grammy nomination for that, and of course, a lot of people are saying it's because no, they he, put. Oh, well, he won a BMA. Yeah, but I look, but he's gonna get on stage and say, "Shout out to Africa." Not saying that. <laughs> not saying she couldn't. <laughs> but they both accepted the award at the VMAs. He said his part because he is from Africa. Yeah. And she said, "Shout out to Africa" or something like. Not that she couldn't say it, but it was just funny. I don't know why. <laughs> I gotta show you the clip. <laughs> no, but I mean. Selena, she's always been to me from what we've seen, graceful and a lady. You know, you you didn't hear her out here wilding yeah. and even when um allegedly or supposedly Kylie Jenner was trying to be shady about Selena Gomez's eyebrows, that was a whole ordeal last year on TikTok. Like, uh, I mean, it was just too much. But she has always been yeah in her bag, but like secretly in her bag. She ain't no show off person. Yeah, which is cool because she let her. Her money and her work speak for. Yeah, and then another thing we uh, appreciate about her is her standard and her perspective on natural beauty. I don't know if you guys know, but from what I know, Selena has had no work done. She's oh, she's had work done. Oh, I don't know, but I thought for sure because oh, Selena, we are. This is millennial. This is who's making moves, and we are. Shining a good light on you. I don't want this to look like we're not. Okay? <laughs> but I thought in that picture, it, something, something. Oh. Like something is different. And I don't know also because she be sick sometimes. So I don't want to jump the gun. But it's definitely giving filler right here. Oh. And a minor eye lift. Okay. Well, let me just say her body still looks. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was, that's what I was going for. I met her, her body, you know, with the whole BBL thing. Just I hear. Oh, sure. You know, she's always kind of just stayed her nat- her beautiful self. And, and not forget about her very viral beauty brand, Rare Beauty. Yeah. <laughs> Rare, Rare beauty. beauty. And that's what I was going to get into because of her respect for beauty. And we, of course, we heard it's amazing. I have a blush. I have one of her lip Oh, blushes. really? It's really good. People really love Rare, Be- Rare Beauty. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard uh, some couple of makeup gurus talk about it, and I mean it's been. She's currently in a in a Hulu series where she's acting mm-hmm. um, a serious role. She plays a detective, I think, on another show too. I I've been seeing the previews. Yeah, so shout out to Selena Gomez for just continuing to um, expand her career in a great way, whether it's acting, singing, yeah. entrepreneur. Yeah, and speaking of singing, speaking of rare beauty. This song is the song that I remember because it has such a positive message and everybody really loved it. What was that song? Um, who says uh, you're not? Oh. Who says who says you're not perfect? Who says you're not worth it? Who says you're the only one who serve it? Trust me, that's the price of beauty. Who says you're not pretty? Who says you're not beautiful? Who says? I was like, oh, this is such a cute, positive song. It's such a Disney little one, too. Right? Yeah, you know. But, but yeah. Like, <laughs> but shout out to Selena Gomez. She is our prospect of who's 
making, making moves. moves this episode. If you guys have any suggestions of who we should shout out, mm -hmm. definitely let us know by hitting us up on Instagram or commenting down below if you're watching on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> so what uh, is our next segment, uh, Danny the Doll? Well, you guys. The next segment is something that we would like to call, because we've only done one so far, so this would be our second one. Yes, I'm excited. Yes. We basically take you guys back to a moment in life where things got real juicy, scandalous, and, heated. and messy. Heated. <laughs> tins and tins across the board. <laughs> yes, we are talking about pop culture's biggest, biggest moments. moments. Bring out the popcorn. Yes. Two thousand and nine, yes, which was a hard that year. Was a year, guys. Uh, only Obama's second year. We talking about the first black man being president of the United States. So it was a lot of tension in the air already. Okay? Period. <laughs> and then we look around. Rihanna and got a knot upside her head. <laughs> right. And so then, like, and then on top of that, a few days later. MJ dies. Oh, so that was God. a big thing of the year. And it, then we got Chris Brown crying on stage. Oh, oh God. God. You guys remember that. I mean, it was just, oh, my God. Was, and, I mean, we're partial before the tribute because the tribute was awesome. Yeah. But just that whole incident, that might have been the biggest thing since, oh, my God. Oh, that was one of, we have another <laughs> one that's really big. Mm. But this this one might take the cake of pop culture's biggest moment. Because of how Huge. much of it, I mean, you have, <laughs> and I'm not saying that it should have not been taken seriously because, and I think what shocked people is that we had never seen anything like that before. Like, and at not that time, lifetime. yeah, yeah, because, you know, Rihanna was hot, Chris Brown was hot, hot. And we had couple. Yeah. So when we seen oh my God. First we heard about the story, but I was like, oh dang. And then TMZ brought them pictures oh out. Oh my god. Because mind you, we had only seen or encountered something like this. Well, not in this this generation. Yeah. We've only known about I can Tina Turner. Not to compare or, them, but that's kind of the only Yeah. Or like people say that when Mary J. Blige and I think it was a Casey or Jojo. Casey yeah, that he used to go upside her head a few times, you know. Okay, but as far as our generation, this was. The, the, but we had never seen it. Like if some, if all these other couples, they kept that discreet. You didn't see no pictures media, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, we didn't have social media then. I think when that incident happened, Instagram just, just came. Twitter out or something. Twitter and all Facebook was out. Yeah. But yeah, and so the, when they were in that car, apparently, let's take it back for a second. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they were in the same car together. I think a Lamborghini. So it's a tight already <laughs> right driving. Rihanna was on the passenger probably smoking her a one too because we know Rihanna likes to get down um and this is what has been said over the years she I think was going through his phone Chris Brown I think from just from the outside looking in looking at it, he looked like a playboy so he probably was doing some things he shouldn't have been doing when you are in a committed relationship Rihanna being a bad gal that she is popping upside the head <laughs> it's not funny we're not making fun of yeah. domestic abuse from a woman or from a man yeah but she gave him a good one two across that head and he was starting to swerve a little bit off the road so he said oh let me pull over and let's try to he was trying to calm her down supposedly and then that's when they, i don't know what happened because we weren't in the car yeah um and then i think as i remember one line came out i don't know i think rihanna might have said it or one of her teams she maybe told one of her teams and they put it out there and said at one point he said I'm about to beat your ass but of course we don't know, know if that was true that. but we do know the results yeah. we've seen the aftermath mm -hmm. and she looked messed up and I was like damn it was so just like a twilight zone because these are two people who we, I mean we love musically and honey when I tell you that Chris Brown lost them they snatched them endorsement deals and feel so fast it took the paint off your toes <laughs> 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 Shout out to Cheetah Girls. <laughs> I mean, they like double mint, double mint gum. He had that commercial. Yes, I used to always tell so. So you remember that? Because this is back when it was popping. Yeah, double mint, double mint gum. I was like, oh, okay. Chris Brown got his first little endorsement deal. I promise you. Twenty four hours after that, incident. after that incident happened, gone. We never seen that commercial. <laughs> 
He couldn't perform nowhere. They took the awards back. He won at none of the award shows. It had, it was so bad. Oprah got on there and gave like oh she had a whole meeting with a bunch of battered women on her show. Yay. If he does it once, he'll do it again. I was like, oh my god. I mean, Brown, we didn't see a side from Chris Brown for so long. Oh my god, like because his image, his brand was tainted. It was, so, it was tainted. That shit was in the just even if he went to McDonald's, now it's oh, I'm not gonna go to McDonald's more because they support domestic violence. So, anywhere <laughs> yeah. he went, I know his team was tied, okay, <laughs> over, time. over time. And when TRL first off, they were gone at this point like trl you know they the show i think was taken off the air or it you know had its last days i don't know when this incident happened i don't know how they popped back up but trl did an episode and i remember they um it was like a a special edition episode they had all kind of abusers abusing women calling battered women and they have like women fans and stuff in the crowd tell me about your story how do you, I was just like, oh my God, like, and I'm not taking away from the seriousness of it because the way he did it was just both of each other. I heard they put their hands on both each other. Yeah. It was just horrible. And I really hate that she had to go through that. But you would have thought this man beat her up, shot her, threw her in the trunk. And then she ended up in down in the river somewhere, uh, swimming with the fishes. <laughs> the way they had this, I mean, and to this day, a lot of uh, oh, yes. has not forgiven him. Chris Brown has even said um, recently in interviews that if it wasn't for his fan base, yeah, he, he probably wouldn't be, you know, able to continue his music career because he doesn't get brand deals anymore. He doesn't go on collaborative tours. Like if he goes on tour, it's him by himself. So he really has to depend on only his fans. It's not sponsors and promos none of that they don't mess with him no more no award shows they just snatched him from the grammys for michael jack was it the grammys yes michael jack, or was it he VMA? was supposed to i think it was VM, i think it might have been VMA. Award show. they yeah and he was supposed to do a mj tribute michael jackson Y'all remember, y'all seen that uh, that video of him him and his uh, dancers practicing? And they snatched that shit from him. And I'm just so like, like when are, yeah, it's like, when are y'all going to let it go? Like, even Rihanna herself. Y'all <laughs> shortly after the incident, um, kind of like a few years later, Rihanna's Rated R album came out. And mm-hmm. then the song Birthday Cake was on there. And then there was a remix with Chris Brown. Now, I don't know if they had previously recorded that before or... But it made people think like, okay, she's forgiven him. I think she's even said that she's forgiven him. I can't yeah. remember. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's just crazy. It's, it's been so long and people still hold on to that. I remember when Kelly Rowland was announcing an award uh, an award for somebody at the VMAs and she mentioned uh, Chris Brown was in one of the categories, I think, for best R&B song or video or something. And she he got a couple of boos and she was just, and she checked that crowd real quick <laughs> you know because it's just like at some point when do y'all let it go and i'm not you know of course we're not taking away from what it did i mean but my thing is the man has suffered enough like Damn, that was so long, so ago. long ago i'm like y'all we've seen celebrities now do way worse and we just turned around and free yep. <laughs> like come on look at this shit with diddy and now Chris Brown has I mean yeah that whole incident was crazy it would be nice to see him at the Super Bowl or perform some or see him uh, at an award show getting what he deserves Mm -hmm. because I mean to be honest I'm not the huge biggest Chris fan not like him personally I'm just not some fan sometimes of the things he he said in the yeah, past about mm-hmm, yeah yeah that we ain't yeah but we're talking about this incident in particular and his talent it was two things you should be able to separate it's in like some cases not in R. Kelly's case yeah no no that's what that's why I say you've got people out here that you really need to be canceling permanently so, and rather than trying to hold on to this 15 how long has it been 10 12 15, 9 it's been you know, my mad thing good about 15 yeah it's like come on y'all can, the people who who were 
around back then y'all kids have grown up and graduated school and you still holding on to this damn anchor exactly. <laughs> so guys we just had to throw it back one time for the one time yes pop culture's biggest moments we love doing this segment just because it takes us back in time. Where were we? What happened? You know, how are we feeling in the situation? Yeah. Were we on Twitter tweeting our little thumbs away? Right. Like, <laughs> and of course, if you guys agree with us or you've got your own opinion of what you think what happened, you know, let us know in the comments, Don't you know. Okay. Yeah. We are here with an open ear and heart. So yeah. let of us course. know what you think. Comment. Just subscribe. Let us know, guys. Yeah, and we'll be sure to cover another pop culture's bigger moments in another episode. We are going to keep these coming. Um, oh my God, are you kidding me? Are you telling me the show is almost over, <laughs> y'all? We almost out of here. I didn't even realize it. Yes, you guys. But hey, it only means that we'll be back even sooner for yeah, a new episode. Exactly. So um, we are closing out our show, of course. With none other than some positivity to spread throughout your week. Yes. With Danny's Dose. Mm -hmm. I am giving you a little dose to start off your week, right? And for this week, guys, the quote goes as such. The best views come after the hardest climbs. I don't okay. you're getting these quotes, but I'm here for them. <laughs> yeah. Right? You get the best view when you climb the hardest climb. And... I mean, I'm sure some of you catch it or some of you don't, that's fine too. But, you know, it really just goes to show you that, you know, you may have to climb some things as far as life goals or whatever you're going through right now. Shit may get hard, but in order to see what's on that other side, you got to climb that mountain first. And it's going to be worth it because once you get over that hump, that obstacle, that trial, tribulation, you're going to get the best part of your life that best part that you've been waiting for and i mean honestly when i've seen this quote it made me think of my sire shout out to her say. it's the climb there's a voice inside my head sing it if you know the crowd <laughs> But yeah, there's always going to be another mountain. I'm always going to want to make it move. Oh. Move. Look. Always going to be an uphill battle. Sometimes, Sometimes you're going to have to lose. Ain't about how fast you get there. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's. It's the climb. It's the climb. The, Get your rubber steel toe boots on and put it in the work, shorty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shout out to T.I. We know y'all going through some stuff too right now. <laughs> you think T.I. is honey or uh, guilty? You know what? I'm over point, it. Yeah. Listen, we're going to give y'all a little scoop of that for the next episode. Not. And so far, it's looking like not. So, so far, I'm on T.I.'s honey. Yeah, yeah. That's just a little a little uh, preview of what y'all gonna get next week if something else come out. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that wraps up episode five of Sister Sound Off. We are in a new year, 2024. Yes. We're so excited to be back. Um we're just gonna get better and better, guys. If you are tired of them other you know what? Let me not throw no shade on no yeah. shade, okay? But if you want a breath of fresh air, a little entertainment news, mm -hmm. a little funny, a little singing, you know what I'm saying? Hey. We you we're your girls, like right. we are here. So enjoy us, keep us posted, and we will keep you updated on the latest of everything. Yep. Once again, be sure to subscribe on YouTube. You can also listen to us on all your streaming platforms. My, they had, follow me <laughs> individually if you want on Instagram at Sophie Joe. Under what is? I don't even know my Instagram name. Oh, that's right. at Sophie Joe. And, and you can follow me, Danny the Doll. That's D A N N I E, <laughs> not D A N N Y. Uh, I am not a transgender, but I do support the community. I'm just saying, it's D A N N I E. <laughs> what? How you spell it? No, for everybody, you know, Danny is D A N Y is for a guy. So I just want to make sure y'all knew. Yeah, no, bitch, somebody put Daniel. <laughs> 
sorry, y'all. Yeah, we went to my granddad's funeral. Oh. Somebody put my name as Daniel. Daniel. Her name is Danielle. And this is our granddad. Yeah, hat. shout out to my late grandfather. We love That's you sweet. and we miss you. This is one of his hats. You know, I had to rock my get into formation look. Shout out to Beyonce. Okay, so Anyways, guys, that wraps up our show. Make sure y'all subscribe. Do all that good stuff. We out. We are out.